Jonathan Lee Riches investigates boots on the ground. I am covering the Micah Miller, John Paul Miller case. I am in front of Jay Peters Grill and Bar. This is where Micah Miller worked. She worked at this location right here, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And the day this tragedy, this terrible tragedy occurred, April 27th, 2024, she was scheduled to work. She was scheduled to work here, 12 p.m. until the end of the evening time uh, when it gets less busy. Uh, not necessarily a time when she's supposed to clock out, but she was supposed to clock in at 12 p.m. She never showed. Interesting things we've learned. Me and Magnolia actually spoke to some employees here. Uh, they're, they're just traumatized. They're, they're scared. They're just in shock that this uh, terrible tragedy happened. Some things that are interesting about this case. Um, as you saw the surveillance uh, footage that Robeson County Sheriff's have released to the public. Um, when Micah Miller left her apartment, she was wearing her work uh, shirt. It was a short sleeve shirt, and then she had a long sleeve shirt under that. But the other surveillance uh, footage of her at the gun store and the gas station, she took her work shirt off, which is very interesting. She only, she only had a uh, long sleeve shirt. Now, I was told inside here uh that she uh the night before the friday the 26th she worked all day long and she clocked out a little after 9 30 p.m at night and she was perfectly normal i'm told she was perfectly normal uh smiling interacting uh, interacting with the customers uh positive and no no signs at all of her being depressed or suicidal or wanting to do any harm to herself so that's the shocking aspect itself. Now, Magnolia is going to share some information that we learned um, about Micah uh, through her employees. And uh, I want to share this information with you right here. Check it out. So I am here with Magnolia Investigates. Magnolia, what have you learned? Uh, we got some more insight from Micah's co-workers at J. Peters on the way the investigators came in um we got a couple of questions answered about the outfit she was wearing the day she died um and just generally how she was when she worked with her co-workers um i think the biggest question people have about micah's outfit that day was she left her apartment wearing one outfit that didn't match the surveillance footage in the gun store or the gas station. Uh, and the coworker explained to us that was because Micah would typically wear a long sleeve shirt underneath her J. Peters shirt, which was a short sleeve shirt. And she sometimes would do that to cover bruises on her arms. So that particular day, the coworker believes that she had the J. Peters shirt on over her long sleeve shirt when she left her house. And at some point on the way to the gun store, she removed the shirt. Um, but for whatever reason, after she went to the gun store and the gas station, uh, it seems that she put that shirt back on because she was found allegedly wearing the J. Peters uniform. What about uh, John Paul Miller? Didn't um, they say something about John Paul Miller coming into this building here, this, this her job here? Yes, yeah, so during the time Micah worked here, um, her coworkers were aware of the abusive marriage she was trying to get out of and trying to get an attorney. And the manager had instructions from Micah that if JP ever came to the restaurant, they were to call the police. So after she died, when he showed up here, everyone was understandably alarmed. Um, they said he came in, he sat at the bar, he talked about her mental health, her medication, how she wasn't taking her medication. And they said that his demeanor was very upbeat. He was even laughing at times. Um, and they were just very disturbed by the entire incident. And the man he came with was Charles Randall, although they said they didn't think that Charles actually came in. He stayed out in the car that day. And didn't they say like he called before he walked in? He actually called on the phone? Yes, he called and said he needed information about Micah Miller. And as a policy, they don't give out information on employees over the phone. And he was informed of that. 
So he said, well, never mind, I'll just come in. And it turned out he was just sitting in the parking lot when he had made the call. And so he just walked in and that's when he started planting the narrative about her medication and mental health. And this was only hours after he did this sermon in front of the church. It was just three, four hours later. And it seems like the employees were disgusted by that sermon. Yes, yes, they all saw it and were very disturbed by all of this. Another thing is they said that authorities did go in here. Yeah, so uh, it sounds like the, we also had heard this previously from an anonymous coworker, but um, it looks like Robeson County came in here on that Tuesday, which would have been three days after her death. Um, and the employee said that it was very clear that they had already decided this was a suicide. They had zero interest in hearing anything about Micah, anything about JP. They had no interest in any of it. They said, that's not why we're here. We're just here to put together a timeline. So it seems that they were visiting all the places that Micah had been to be able to come up with a concrete timeline. Uh, that was on Tuesday. That would have been Tuesday, May 7th. Um, and late that afternoon is actually when the media packet was released that had the timeline. So I believe they were stopping here to complete their timeline. And uh, the employees were very discouraged because they tried to tell them about JP and the things that they had witnessed. And the investigators just had no interest. And uh, also, like they said, that uh, Mike was working here about off and on for about a year. Yeah, so uh, we've, we've been told that, and we've seen uh, comments that, um, you know, one of the things that JP would do to Micah, this was in her, this was actually listed in Micah's list, that's a proposed addendum to Micah's law, um, and one of the things that, that JP would do is he would randomly get mad at her about her work at the church or she would do something he didn't like or not do something that he wanted her to do and he would just randomly fire her so she would go work elsewhere so jay peters is where she would work when she wasn't working at the church um she left jay peters in mid-october or november sometime in that time frame around the um africa, africa trip. trip she told everyone she was going to devote her life to her mission work in Africa and that was her plan. So when March rolled around and she came back and reapplied to work here, they were all happy to see her but they were surprised to see her back and they were very sad to hear why she was back. Um, that she was trying to start a new life, uh, she was struggling at the time with getting an attorney because no attorneys would take a case against John Paul Miller. So she was really struggling and she shared those struggles with her coworkers. She also informed them that she was building a case against the church because of financial improprieties that she had discovered on her own. Uh, how did the employees in here describe her work, work ethic? Well, they said, they said despite all the things that Micah was going through in her personal life, you would never know it at work. And she always behaved professionally. Um, she had a great work ethic. She was always very helpful and, and encouraging to her coworkers. That was one thing someone pointed out that, you know, if they were having a hard time at work, uh, Micah was the one who would be their cheerleader and encourage them. So they all think very highly of her and are very sad about everything that's happened. Very good reporting. Thank you, Magnolia. All right. So, uh, just heard from Magnolia. We are covering this case extensively on JLR and Investigates. And uh, possible that uh, some of the employees here are going to speak to us. Um, and uh, we'll get more information. And they want to just share who Micah is. Micah's Law uh, might be in effect sometime this year. The family of uh, Micah Miller are pushing to get Micah's Law passed. What's your thoughts? Uh, J. Peters Grill and Bar. It's a nice place in there. It uh, has like dark hardwood. It got a little bar in there. And uh, she served people and uh, said she worked hard. So, um, you know, she was supposed to come to work this day, uh, showing no signs whatsoever of any, uh, you know, self-harm on herself. So how and why did this all happen? 
We're Boots on the Ground, JLR Investigate. Subscribe to the channel, like, hit the notification button when more information comes out about this, her job or anything in, in reference to the day this tragedy happened and uh, you know the proceedings going down the line. Is JP going to get sued? Is he going to be charged? We will cover it on JLR Investigates Boots on the Ground. We will talk soon. JLR Investigates. Stay safe.